El auto es una de las expresiones más cotidianas de tecnología, es funcional y nos desplaza. Pero ¿qué ocurre cuando más allá de la efectividad, la tecnología nos dignifica como personas, nos permite realizarnos, pese a los golpes o el disparo que pueda cambiar tu vida? Ese es el caso de Todd, porque gracias a la tecnología ha podido surgir y desarrollarse como persona y también profesionalmente. Siri, Dame la dirección de Todd Stadelfeld. Turn left. Soy Amaro Gómez Pablos y esto es Al Límite de la Ficción. Open the front door. Well, this is just a home that we've created uh, about four and a half years ago. Todd, what is the name of your house? <laughs> We refer to it as the Quadrilateral. Hey Siri, turn off my office lights. Humor yeah. is uh, key. Yeah. Why so? Uh, okay. Well, because for for my situation, I know a lot of pain, I know a lot of suffering, I know a lot of trauma and hurt and How do you cope with it? And how do you sort of make light of the situation or push through it? And for me, it's, it's always been humor. You're Todd, but since we're friends, I get to call you Quadfather. We got heaters outside, you know, that I can turn on and off with my voice, you know, or use the app um, because I'm always cold, you know, so I can do the heaters. That's pretty rad too, you know, so. The lights, obviously. Yeah, the lights, the blinds, the door locks, the doors, the garage doors. Verbal commands. I could do verbal commands, or I could use my phone, um, or I could go to my computer, and I could do it that way as well. So all points of access, depending on you know what you're trying to do. You do get. Toda tecnología tiene que ser basada en un desarrollo inclusivo. Debiese in, eh, desarrollarse para todos. No solamente la inclusión habla de integrar a personas con, con discapacidades o con dificultades, sino que la inclusión es que todos somos distintos, todos tenemos distintas necesidades y la tecnología viene a sacar el máximo potencial que tenemos todos. How was the accident? What got you here? In August of uh, 1987, I was, um, I was eight years old. My mom decided to remodel her bedroom and to remove the remaining items that were owned or that were a part of my dad, my biological dad, uh, who had died four years prior. And in that removal um, of items from her room were guns uh, and ammunition. So she put, uh, it was all rifles, She put the rifles into a spare room. She put the ammunition into a spare room. And I was eight, my cousin Michael, 11. Uh, we just started playing with the guns. And ultimately, uh, yeah, he shot me um, with a 22 uh, caliber uh, rifle. And he hit me in the chin and it went through my throat. And then it severed my spinal cord, you know, at C4. And uh, the bullet is still there. You know, if you take an x-ray, you know, you'll see uh, bits and parts of the bullet all throughout my jaw, you know, and through my throat and stuff like that. So that's how I got paralyzed. Technology, what does it mean to you? Because from the outside, oftentimes, just the sheer word in itself is a cold-blooded word, and it is not, definitely. Yeah, I agree. Technology definitely has grown, you know, over the years. Uh, I've been in the chair a long time, and so it's, it's, the definition's changed, for sure. Uh, but if you're going to ask me right now, in this moment, 
I would say technology has brought me uh, independence and it has sort of elevated me as a, as, a, as a human, as a man, as a husband, a stepfather, you know, a homeowner, a business owner. It has uh, allowed me to be, um, I guess maybe more human uh, and less, you know, about the device or less about the disability. All right, starting from my left to right, button number one. It's called move back, move previous. This is the office. You know, I'm a software developer and I own an IT company. So this is what I do for a living as I, I watch, you know, servers um, in hospitals and in, in, in laboratories. Creo que la tecnología me ha dado la oportunidad de hacer muchas cosas que sin ella no lo hubiese podido hacer, que es más humana, es más cercana y me ha dado la oportunidad de ir a la universidad, de poder manejar y que yo sé que día a día, a medida que vaya avanzando la tecnología, se me van a abrir infinitas posibilidades más en la vida. Por ejemplo, yo como no tengo movilidad en, en mis manos, eh, yo no puedo eh, pedir ayuda en la noche agarrando el celular, sino que gracias a Siri yo puedo llamar a alguien para que me venga a asistir. Convenience for you is independence for me. You know, with this smart technology and digital assistant and things like that. You know, I'm sorry that you all guys are lazy and you want to sit on the couch and not get up and go do stuff, but dang it, I'm going to take advantage of that because now I get to turn on my TV and open my blinds and doors and windows. I mean, this is some pretty radical times. So yeah, I, I think technology done right just keeps increasing dignity and independence. Water straw for drinking. Actually, it was a little over nine when my mom told me that. It was, wasn't quite 10 yet. And uh, I got home and from the hospital, and she said, you're here till 20. Uh, and I went, okay. You know, a lot of yes ma'am, no ma'am. And uh, she said, uh, it's called tough love, and I'm not taking care of you the rest of my life. You know, you're the one that choose to play with those guns, and you got shot. I didn't tell you to do that. And uh, you know, her words, not mine. And, uh, and so I said, yes ma'am. Your disability isn't your key, you know, to, to get out of or have an excuse. You own all of what you do. And, uh, and it just was made very clear to me from a very young age, and so that's how I've applied my life. I'm obsessed with security. I love my wife, right? I'm crazy about my wife, Karen. And I can't physically move and protect and secure, um, but Damn it, I can have cameras and I can watch and make sure, you know, the house is okay. You know, we get notified if, if somebody walks up the driveway. Yeah, so for example, look, my wife was coming home, right, uh, through the window there, and I just opened up the doors for her so, so she could get in. So I just, I opened those for her, you know, as I, I saw her coming up the driveway. Fantastico. Yeah, and then so now I'm gonna open up the door for her as well. So you can see on this app here with this monitor. It's an art element, and you know, life can be so cold and harsh, but when you allow you know, the artistic avenues to come through and just do an expression of self, yeah, that's beauty. Open the front door. Letting him take care of me uh, and allowing those elements to come through and not uh, pigeonholing or creating your own idea of what that needs to be, but being willing to accept what it can be. What do we need to have? So what was that bare minimum? And then what do we want? How, how do you go up from there? Do it from scratch and get what you want instead of trying to make what you get fit to what you need. I love how it gives my husband the freedom to, to move around and to access his own house and to control the climate and the, the warmth of the lights and, and when you want them on and when you want them off. Prior to, to December 31st, 2011, 
I was a, a butcher, man. I butchered myself. I, I didn't like myself. I hated myself. I was mad at myself. I, you know, that little eight-year-old boy was just like, hey, come hang out with me, come hang with me. No, you stay away from me. You know, I don't want to recognize or name all that or any of that. And, uh, and then from that date forward, it was, man, go give that little eight-year-old boy a hug. That's all he wants is a hug. You know, go, go name him. Go, go give him some love and let him know it's okay. <laughs> Knowing that I am broken and that that's never gonna change. And uh, trying to find what beauty can come out of being broken and, uh, and how do you be beautifully broken. And uh, for me, it was a lot of, a lot of prayer and, uh, and just going, man, I've been doing this wrong. And, uh, and I just say, hey, God, can you just, can you step in here? I think I'm done. And uh, his response was a big smile. And he's like, yeah, buddy, I've been waiting for this a long time. And I'd be glad to write the chapters of your story. Get ready, because they're going to be wild. And I was like, OK, let's go do this together. And look what he's done. So you know, it's been a big ride. And I just got no regrets. I'm a, I'm a dude, and the dude abides. and. Uh, I'm in love with my king, and uh, he's given me a lot of good gifts. So I got no complaints. Let's go do this. So there you go. Hey Siri, said TV time. Why Todd? He sees me as a complete human being, and he accepts my brokenness and my flaws, and he isn't trying to change me. He accepts me where I'm at, and, and that was, that's beautiful. And we're all broken. We all have our flaws and our intricacies, that, and that's what makes us human. And it's okay, you know, it's like, what are you gonna do with that, though, and where are you gonna go? You don't need a wheelchair to acknowledge that. No necesitas una silla de ruedas para ver que todos estamos rotos de alguna manera. Now I just turn the fireplace on, 